Good morning. We welcome all our parishioners and visitors who have come to worship our Lord. Let us participate reverently with distractions put away, opening our hearts and minds to the gift of salvation offered to us this day. After the collect at today's Mass, all children through second grade are invited to gather in front of the AMBO with the catechist and process to the chapel to hear and learn about today's gospel. This children's liturgy of the word is appropriate for children of this age. They will return to Mass during the offertory. Volunteers from Helping Hugs will be outside after Mass today collecting for our twin parish in Haiti, St. Joseph. The celebrant today is Father Daniel Ahunia, assisted by Deacon Trey Hayden. Our gift bearers are Jim and Carol Meyer. The intentions for today's Mass is for Carolyn Wolpert. In the first reading, God delivers his commandments. Paul explains to the Corinthians that the challenge the gospel poses to Jews and Gentiles is also the power and wisdom of God to those who receive it. In the gospel, Jesus drives the money changers out of the temple. When questioned about this, Jesus said he would rebuild the temple in three days if it was destroyed. Later, his disciples understood this to be a prediction of his resurrection. Good morning. Please stand. Turn to number 664. Seek the Lord, number 664. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with the Spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness.
May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and thanksgiving has shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not carve idols for yourself in the shape of anything in the sky above, or on the earth below, or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishments for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done by either you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. <coughs> Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord.
our reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area the sheep and oxen, spilled the coins with the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. this third Sunday of Lent, we hear St. Paul say, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. What does he mean by that? Let's first look at the Jews' demand for signs. The historical relationship of the Jewish people with God was one of several covenants that each came with its own sign. There's the covenant of Noah after the great flood with the sign of the rainbow. There's the covenant with Abraham with the sign of circumcision. 
And today, in that reading from Exodus, God gives the Israelites Ten Commandments as part of His covenant with them. In a covenant, each party has obligations to the other. Many of you have covenants with your homeowners associations. These specify what you can and what you cannot do with your property. The reason for this is the common good of all the community. The sign of your covenant with the association will be your signature on the document. When God made the covenant with the Israelites, he promised to be faithful to them always. That was his obligation to them. In return, he gave them these guidelines, these laws, these commandments as to how they were to act toward him and to each other. These were meant for the good of all the community. And the sign of this covenant was the two stone tablets with ten words representing the ten commandments. You may have heard of the Ten Commandments, which referred to as the Decalogue. Decalogue, it just comes from the Greek, and it means ten words, which refer to this sign of the Ten Commandments. The reason why the Israelites, and you and I, need these commandments is the lingering effect of original sin. The proper term for this is concupiscence. What that is, is it's our inclination to personally sin against God and neighbor. If you doubt this, just get on Highway I-285 in Atlanta at rush hour on Friday afternoon before a holiday weekend and see how many commandments get broken. <laughs> Which brings us to the gospel where we see sins against God and neighbor. On the eve of Passover, the highest holy day of the Jewish people, Christ sees the temple, his father's house, being profaned by livestock merchants and money changers who fleece and cheat his children. And so, in righteous anger, he literally cleans house by driving out that which defiles. The point here is that even though the Jews had the Ten Commandments, because of concupiscence, our inclination toward evil, they still fell into sin. The same is true for you and for me. No matter how hard we may want and try to perfectly follow the Decalogue, we will sometimes fail. The Ten Commandments cannot provide us salvation. They cannot save us from sin. But notice what happens next. The Gospel quotes the Jews asking, what sign can you show us for doing this? And what sign does Jesus give? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now his audience thought he was referring to the physical structure of the temple. In fact, he was speaking metaphorically. He was referring to his body as the temple. By saying, destroy this temple, he was pointing to his future crucifixion. By saying, in three days I will raise it up, he was pointing to his future resurrection. The crucifixion and the resurrection of Christ is the new covenant that can, in fact, save us from sin and eternal death, unlike the Mosaic covenant of the commandments. By the way, what is the Latin word for covenant? Testamentum. Hence, the New Testament is the new covenant. And what is the sign of the new covenant. It's the cross, the universal sign of Christianity. That's why St. Paul says, Jews demand signs, and we proclaim Jesus crucified. All right, so I can see the wheels are turning out there right now, and some folks are thinking, okay, if the Ten Commandments can't save us, and they restrict our freedom anyway, well, what's the point in having them? Three quick comments. First, we should never confuse the word freedom with license. License says, I can choose to do whatever I feel like doing, regardless of the consequences. Freedom says, I can choose to do what I want, as long as I respect God and my neighbor. The Ten Commandments do not restrict our freedom. They do restrict our license. Second, comment on why we need 
the Decalogue. And for anyone who is a parent, you already understand this concept very well. We put guidelines in place for our children because we want them to be safe, healthy, and happy. We know that if we don't, because of their ignorance and self-will, they could hurt themselves or others. Think about the mother who tells her toddler, don't touch the hot stove. We call ourselves children of God, and we call God our Father, the perfect Father, who only desires our health, safety, and happiness. Therefore, he gives us these commandments to protect us and others from our ignorance and self-will. The third reason we need the Ten Commandments is that they make us acutely aware of our sin. And this is the tie-in with Paul's message of Christ crucified. By that I mean God gave us the grace of his mercy in his son crucified for our sins. But we have to cooperate with that grace. At baptism, you and I were made temples of God, temples of the Holy Spirit. Sadly, how often we allow the beasts and merchants of sin to take up residence within us. And so on this third Sunday of Lent, Jesus wants to cleanse our temples, using the commandments like a spiritual ten-cord whip. You and I can drive out all that is not holy, all that is not true within us. We ought to use these commandments to make a thorough examination of conscience. For example, the fifth commandment doesn't just prohibit murder, it prohibits anger and hate as well. The Sixth Commandment doesn't just prohibit adultery, it prohibits lust and behaving immodestly. The Seventh Commandment doesn't just prohibit stealing, it also calls for us to practice the works of mercy. We can sin in the things we do and in the things we fail to do. Now, I will spare you the tedium of going through all Ten Commandments. You're welcome. But if we are unsure about what needs to be cleansed from our individual temples, we can always Google Catholic examination of conscience, we can consult the catechism of the Catholic Church, or we may ask the priest and confessional for help. The point here is, we forfeit the grace Christ paid for on that cross if we do not repent and amend our ways. St. Paul said, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified. When the Jews demanded a sign for the temple cleansing, Jesus pointed to his death and resurrection, the new covenant whose sign is the cross. That's why Paul proclaims Christ crucified <coughs> to the Jews. But what does Paul mean when he says Greeks look for wisdom? He was referring to the Greco-Roman culture that highly valued reason in the pursuit of wisdom. And when Paul proclaims Christ crucified, he continues that the Gentile Greco-Romans view this as foolishness. Why? Because from their rationalistic perspective, conventional wisdom said that to be crucified was the ultimate defeat, it was the ultimate weakness, it was the ultimate foolishness. It looked that way to the Greco-Romans, it looked that way to Jesus' own disciples, and it looked that way to unbelievers, it still looks that way to unbelievers today. There's a prayer from the Stations of the Cross that sums up this perspective perfectly. Almighty God, on the edge of sadness when all seemed lost, you restored to us the Savior we thought defeated and conquered. Help us to see your hand in every failure and your victory in every defeat. St. Paul can proclaim Christ crucified to the Greeks because we Christians call ourselves an Easter people. Because we know that the dark and tragic way of the cross ultimately leads to the joy and life of the resurrection. And the Easter paradox is this. The thief is really victory. God's weakness is stronger than sinful human strength. God's foolishness is wiser 
than a sinful human wisdom. Why? Because God the Father vindicated Christ his Son. God proved Christ true in what he said by raising him from the dead. This paradox of the resurrection is what St. Paul will preach later in this very same epistle to the Greek Corinthians. And why is that resurrection so important? Because the forgiveness of sins that the cross is a sign of still doesn't get us to heaven. We are forgiven, yes, but it doesn't get us to heaven. For well, that, we need the reality of Christ's resurrection on that first Easter morning. The Easter promise of our resurrection. This is why Christ tells us <coughs> this day, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial to the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was intended for the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the cross of Spirit. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his will come down from God. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. God is our loving Father, and he has called us today to repentance. Let us now make our prayers and petitions to him, believing that he will answer us. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful, may the Holy Spirit continue sanctifying and teaching us in the ways of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For world leaders, may God guide them in the ways of peace and prosperity for all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing struggles, or adversity, or illness, especially Lu Robruto, may God strengthen their faith and pour out upon them his consolation. <coughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all parishioners contributing to our diocese annual Catholic appeal, may their gifts be an expression of the gifts God has given them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Stephanie Jones and Carolyn Wolpert, for whom this Mass is offered, with the hope of the resurrection. May God reward them with, with eternal joy in his presence. For those protecting our freedom, and for those in the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray together our diocesan vocations prayer. O oh God, hear our prayer. Let our time come to you. Bless our diocese of the Savannah. May the vocations be preserved and the fruit of the Savannah. Give them the name of the Father, by the name of the Savior, and the love to follow always in the footsteps of your Christian Son. Amen. I want us to add an intention for all our family members and relatives and friends who are battling with faith, who are struggling with doubts in their faith, that the God who 
heals and who leads may meet them to conversion. As we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. God our Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have given to us. We surrender ourselves to you today, and we ask you to fill us with all the graces we need to continue to follow in the footpaths of Jesus Christ, your Son. We make all this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turn to turn to number one two nine beyond the days number one two nine. <laughs>
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord has sent the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for your will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we Acclaim. For these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and your resurrection until you are one until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, est divido patria omnipotenti, in unitate spiritus sancti, omnis ono et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Serious command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit, let us all preach out the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 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 Lord,
Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we sit for some announcements. Please join us in the parish hall after Mass for coffee and donuts. The, the Grotter Religious Goods Shop, located in the breezeway of the parish hall, is open after Mass this weekend. Next weekend's second collection will be for Catholic <coughs> women's services. The Parish Council of Catholic Women is offering a retreat for women on March 16th. Please see the bulletin to register. And also, please see the bulletin for more announcements and information. Before the final blessing, yeah, I think they mentioned my name earlier, so there's no need to introduce myself again. But for the sake of those who came a bit late, my name is Father Daniel Ihunia, and I'm from Nigeria. And uh, I have been working for one year in Augusta, and by the grace of the bishop and uh, Moisino Shrek and Deacon Trey and others, I was asked to come and help out a little bit in the parish here, and also in Brunswick, and just a little bit in the island until the middle of this month. So it is so wonderful to share this great sacred moment with you. Uh, it means a lot to me coming from Nigeria. And I thank God for you all and for your faith. And I pray that your faith may continue to increase and you may continue to enjoy the goodness of the Lord despite all the challenges we face in life. Amen. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Turn to 133 three, as we sing our sending song, Save Your People, number 133. Three. 